you know, she started her career, she went to Juilliard, and she started her career as a singer, um, a television star, a Broadway star. Uh, she has, uh, let me read, you know, some of the specifics. And not only has she done uh, amazing stuff on the stage and everything, but also she's been asked to um, serve in various different boards and committees. So that helps me and all of us to understand the great job she did with us. And we were so lucky to have somebody with that kind of a background and all that experience to be uh, giving so much to us. So she was a trustee of the Television Academy. She started in Broadway. She was a board member of, uh, I don't know, what is it called? AFTRA? Is it you? Television Union and the Screen Actors Guild. Yeah, awesome. She had her own television show, CBS TV, called Around the Corner. Oh, she was a regular singer in the Bell Telephone Hour. That was on television back a while. And uh, let's see, first person of color to be a regular singer on the Ed Sullivan Show. Some of us remember that Ed Sullivan show. And the, Be the Beatles uh, appeared in the Ed Sullivan show, so it was really big. I mean, that really had more viewers than almost any show. She was um, in the um, musical Jamaica with Lena Horne on New York City Light Opera for several seasons. She did all sorts of commercials and recordings of every kind. And then, and then she set out in another career, uh, which was uh, singing on board uh, a uh, uh, cruise ships, and she was four times around the world on cruise ships. <laughs> That's a hard life, I would say. <laughs> and uh, she performed in the Royal Opera of Belgium. All these things, isn't that amazing? Wow, we're so lucky to have her here. Then, um, so after the cruise ship and entertaining part of her career, she was a staff on staff at the uh, Natural History Museum, uh, welcoming people that were coming into the museum. And then uh, she went into oh, yeah. hey, this is my <laughs> um, so she. Then she became a concierge, and, and eventually, most of the time, as a concierge, she served at the uh, Renaissance Hotel uh, down in Times Square. And uh, you know, concierges helping people with finding the theater and uh, the restaurants and all that. Sort of thing. You can imagine what a resourceful and charming person she was to those guests. And then she she rose to the top, of course, of that career area too, and she became a member of the prestigious Clay Door, the, the Golden Key Society of the <laughs> concierges, and met, and they had meetings in different parts of the world, and so on, so, wow. So she's been really an indispensable leader with us, and uh, I just want to share with you one story um, among over working together for quite a while and, and had such a, had such a very, very nice partnership together in this. And, and uh, she taught me all I know about this. <laughs> and uh, anyway, when the Trinity School wanted to take over the fourth floor, many of you remember that particular incident, in, around 1992-93, the whole, the whole fourth floor then, they were going to put staircases up in here and so on and push us out. And um, we had to go through all sorts of rigmarole with the city. And the, uh, and the city planning commission was having a hearing. And we didn't know anything about the city planning commission or any of this process. And Trinity's lawyers were breathing down the neck and so forth. And so there was a hearing, and it was all on uh, being recorded and so on. And the chair of the planning commission said, now would the tenants like to speak? 
And so Christine got up to speak, and she was so eloquent, and so steady, so persuasive, so really, she, she just made the case so well that the planning commission, that the school thought they had them in their pocket. There was, this was almost a done deal. And suddenly, the members of the planning commission were saying, now wait a minute, we didn't know about this. And so the planning commission more or less turned it around and they said, well, we want then the school and the tenants to discuss how the tenants, if the school is going to take this space, they have to give the tenants equal space and next thing you know, we then negotiated and negotiated, and the school didn't want to do that, and so eventually we got to keep this important space. So that was the key moment, and there were many other key moments and wonderful things that Christine did. And of course, in our meetings, she's always been such a wonderful presence, and calming presence always. So anyway, we thank her for these things. Now, Suzanne, are you going right. to yeah, step I've up? I've got and, something very special. Yeah, oh, very special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For the super nice. special. Here, come here. Oh. <laughs> a little. Okay. Right. Keep your seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christine has been a great person to work with for all of us. And she's a friend to all. And she welcomes everybody. Even those people who are knocking on the doors, she still smiles at them. <laughs> even though she and doesn't let them in. <laughs> and she tells them they should not do that. Uh, so at any rate, she is just super with everyone and a natural leader. She's been a very credible uh, spokesperson to all of us in Trinity House. If people don't understand something or we messed up something, she tells us that we just can't resist. We've got to get better to please her. And she's always calm, well-spoken, and she's always, always ready to speak up about her views of what should be happening to tenants and to make our our needs known and she really pushes the buttons on these people who want to you know push back what we have gained all these years so she's got eloquence she's got steadiness and all of us here at trinity house we just love you and we thank you for your leadership and your your great friendship to all of us. And here's some posters for you. <laughs> Certificate of Appreciation presented to Christine Spencer, longtime chair of the Tennis Association, in grateful acknowledgement of more than four decades of extraordinary service and inspirational leadership. And actually, the second, 2017. Oh, that's yours. <laughs> I'm now 
87 years old. And I spent doing this and fighting in my unions. I seem to support everybody in the world. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, it's, it's about time I stopped fighting for everything, but I know I will. I keep on. But I will be a member, I will be here in attendance, and, and I will certainly listen to this pretty band of these wonderful people. I'm going to thank you all. Thank you everyone for being here tonight.